Hey, how are you? Just sort of hanging out, waiting for some people to get on the Facebook Live part. I couldn't, uh, couldn't wait to get today started. I had some ideas for some silly stuff that I want to do uh, later on. And uh, William and Samuel, Melanie and... Yay! Oh, my goodness. I uh, just had some silly ideas I want to do uh, later on for uh, some silly stuff I want to do for the show. Yeah. And I was just talking to Miss Christy. Miss Christy's here. Say hi, Miss Christy. Yeah, it's my wife, Miss Christy. The, um, I just finished saying to her, oh, today we got to take the garbage out and things. She goes, no, Taz, it's only Tuesday. I said, no, I thought it was Wednesday. She goes, no, it's Tuesday. So I said, uh, Hugo, Malaya. I just went, uh, no, for sure, it's uh, Wednesday for sure. And then she just points at the calendar and it's Tuesday. So I guess when you're st stuck at home, I, I'm not stuck with you, honey. Uh, when we're, we're stuck together uh, for long periods of time and I don't go out and I don't do any uh, work or I don't have any, you know, sort of assignments that I have to do. Hey, Rob, good to see you. And um, Sean Murdy. Yeah, Sean Murdy is a friend of mine from years ago. So happy to see your name, buddy. Lots of love to you, Alex and Bennett. Uh, I'll try to finish a thought uh, before I get into saying hi to everybody. Um, I guess when you're not doing things structured, you know, you don't have to go to school, or you don't have to go to work, or you don't have to, you know, go out and do certain things, the days sort of all get squished together. Oh, man. No. Sawyer is doing puzzles. Well, that's good. I have a puzzle. It's called my brain, and I try to put things into into places, and they don't always fit. <laughs> Ryan Pandolfi and Little Logie are watching, too, from Brandon. Brandon, Manitoba. And that's uh, Cheyenne and Brooklyn, and lots of people signing in. We'll let a few more people sign in, and then I'll get to um, Starla and Allie and Caspin and Sophia from North Battleford and Jan Courier. Ah, Jan is a friend of mine, and so is her husband, Jeff. And Sean Watson, he's a magician. He's like, ready, one, two, three, and stuff appears. Uh, not very good with that. Oh, here, I can do one. Let's try Let's try this. Ready? There's my recall. One, two, three. Ta-da! Nothing? Okay. Matea and Kennedy from Niverville. I gotta go to Niverville today for a couple minutes. Um... Yeah, so that's it. That was my brain. My brain was saying today, all day so far, it's Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. So every reminder I put in my phone, because I have to put, uh, I have to put all of uh, reminders in my phone, because if I don't, um, Maggie and Patrick from Wolseley, you know what will happen if I don't put reminders in my phone? I forget. So all my reminders are for Thursday, so i got to take them all out. Anyways. Well, should we get to reading? Is it? Oh, I got a little bit of a kick underneath. That doesn't mean that, that I'm doing something wrong. It's like, boom. Am is thinking about doggy heads. Doggy heads? Oh, well, I, I, they're cool. Bram and Mac in British Columbia. So I'm going to read this uh, out of this book. Uh, it's the Big Red Book of Beginner Books. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to be reading I Want to Be Somebody New. 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 That's one I want to do. And then uh, first, I think I'm going to read, uh, or maybe second, I don't know. Well, we're going to read Billy's Booger. <laughs> A memoir, sort of. Yeah. So let's read uh, from this book first. Let's, let's read this one first. Yeah? No, let's read that one. Here we go. Here, this is me reading. Karen and Kagan and St. Norbert, the K2, the K2 people. Um... So here's uh, Hudson and Ella uh, from Brandon know uh, this as well as a lot of you. So uh, somebody asked me, uh, sent me a little uh, text the other day saying that um, it's, uh, um, why do you stumble over your words so much? And I said, uh, okay, well, here's what happens sometimes. I have dyslexia. So sometimes my brain goes way so fast. And um, it tries to read the words, and the words sort of either float around the page, or my eyes go from one word to the next word, one word to the next, or up and down, and they're all around. Or sometimes the words just don't make any sense. So what I'll do um, is uh, uh, I will read a word, like this says Big Red uh, Book of Beginner Books, right? 
But sometimes I'll get them mixed up and it'll be red book, big beginner, red, big book, and my brain will just go like that. So that's called dyslexia. Raven, you know that, right? We were been talking about that. Oh, so I have some dyslexia happening, and today, especially with a busy brain, let's give it a shot. Here's Tazzy's biggie, biggie brain, biggie brain, busy brain, biggie, busy brain, because it's wrote red big. Take a breath, and let's start. Once I wanted to be in the zoo, and that was the day I first met you. This book's heavy. It's by Dr. Z uh, no, it's not by Dr. Zeus. Who wrote, the, wrote this one? I have to make sure I say who wrote it. This one was by Robert Lopshire. So Robert Lopshire, thank you very much for I Want to Be Somebody New. And now back to your regularly scheduled reading that was interrupted by my brain. You said the zoo was not for me. The circus, you said, where is where I should be. And so the circus is where I went. I did my tricks with spots on a tent. I put my spots way up in the air. I put my spots just everywhere. My tricks with spots, they were lots of fun, but no spot tricks. <laughs> I am done. Now I want to be somebody new, so here's a trick I'll show you. Ready, set, now. One, two, three. Now look and tell me, what do you see? Well, what do you see? An elephant. <laughs> An elephant is what we see. Why you're so big, so big as can be. But being that big, Cannot be fun. Say, you must weigh a ton. Oh, they can't play on the teeter totter anymore. Bonk. You cannot walk up on this fence or squeeze between these circus tents. Oh, I want to be somebody else, but there's. There's some challenges. The door of your house is now too small. You can't get through that door at all. You can't go here and you can't go there. You can't go much of anywhere. Ah, so he wanted to be somebody else. And everything in his life is made for him. You cannot sit in your old chair. Your new rear end will not fit there. You are big. You are very fat. I do not care for you like that. I'm going to try to sit on his chair. It's going to squish that little chair. Every word you said is true. So, okay, I'll be someone new. Ready? Said now, one, two, three. One, two, three. Look and tell me, what do you see? A tall giraffe is what we see. You are as tall, as tall as can be. That's very tall. A short giraffe is called a llama. But being that tall can't be any fun. You're taller now than everyone. Your head is now so high in the air, it's hard to see your face up there. I guess so, hey? It'd be very hard to see. 
You wait there. I need a kiss. Oh, I can't. Uh, ben, don't give me a kiss. Good night. Sorry. And we can see from way down here, a bird is flying in your ear. We do not like to see you tall. We do not like to see you tall at all. We got a bird in his ear. Every word of what you say is true. Okay. So I'll try someone new. Ready, set, now. One, two, three. Now tell me, what do you see? A mouse. A mouse, that's what we see. You're as small as small can be. Well, what do you think? I'm asking you. Do I look good this way to you? <laughs> yeah, mouse. I like some cheese. We do not like you, fat or tall, and now you're much, much too small. Your chair is too big for you. Oh, a chair is too big for you. I've never had a chair that's been too big for me, actually. And now your door is too big, too. You cannot open your door, and that's not all. There's much, much more. A mouse cannot go out and play. A mouse must hide inside all day. And a mouse must never make a sound. Because that's what brings the cats around. <laughs> look what's in the window. You look delicious. It'd be a catastrophe. <laughs> oh, just... Keep reading. And there are traps put out to catch a mouse. That's because no one wants one in their house. That's true. We do not like you fat or tall, and now you know what's wrong with small. Okay, okay. Okay, you two. I'll make myself um, be someone new. Ready, set, now. One, two, three. Now look and tell me what you see. And the mouse. One, two, three. Tell me, look and what you see. Oh, no, you don't. You stop there. We like you and we really care. We liked you best a whole, whole lot when you were just our old friend Spot. So do your trick with your one, two, three. But show us what we want to see. Ah. Say you're right and right as can be. And it feels best just to be me. Me. That's, you know what? That's so great. Because his friends saw him for what he wanted to be and let him try that for a little bit. And then they let them know, let him know that, uh, that he, they loved him just the way he was. You know, when I was little, and sometimes now, I, I mean, I'm very silly all the time. I'm very silly. And I'm very goofy, and and uh, some I have big emotions. Do you know you know what I mean? I laugh really hard, and I uh, joke really hard, and then when I my heart gets broken, I cry really hard. There's no sort of in between. It's always one or the other with me, right? And I used to be very embarrassed about that, you know, because people would be like, "Oh, why are you always being so goofy, or why are you always being so..." Um, silly or why can't you why can't you be serious so and why would you and then I would get upset McKinley you know what I would do um I would sometimes uh you know I would have tears in public and Peter uh, people would say um why are you having tears in public or why are you always so silly you should try something be somebody do you know be this and be that so I tried for a long time to be 
somebody I thought I was supposed to be instead of just being me. And you know what? When I wasn't being silly or the, the things like, and, and when I wasn't having my big emotions, when I was just holding everything in, then I got angry all the time. And you know what? I just went back to being me. I'm very silly and I'm a very, got a, like, I got what people say a big heart because I always tell people, oh, I love you or, or here's a big hug and things like that. And people, they can't handle that sometimes. So you know what I learned? I learned that I shouldn't change, that I don't need to change who I am. People just have to accept me for me. And uh, I think I'm pretty cool now. And not everybody's going to think as highly of me as I do. And that's okay. But I know that I'm a goofy fella with a big heart. And sometimes I have big tears. And I have big sadness sometimes. And I have big happiness. But you know what? I got a whole bunch of love. So now I'm just this big, lovable, giant kid who cries sometimes. And if people don't like me that way, then they don't have to be my close friend. You can still be my friend, but you don't have to be my really close friend, right? And so I love being silly. Hmm. And I love being me. Steve Patterson is there. Steve Patterson, one of the funniest people and one of the nicest people I, I think I know in my, my whole world. I really, really love Steve and his... And his family. Yes. And I'm going to read Billy's Booger, a memoir. It's a memoir. And my friend gave me this book. My friend gave me this book. And it is um, Doug Spears from the Winnipeg Free Press gave me this book. But I almost forgot something. And I have little sticky notes everywhere that I forget to read. Here's what it is today. My friend Justin, his mom Leslie... It's her birthday. And because we've been singing happy birthday to people, how about we sing Leslie a happy birthday? Because we are all just kids inside. So here we go. One, two, three, four. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Leslie. Happy birthday to you. Jazz it up. And many more. So, happy birthday to Leslie. Okay. So this book, back to the book reading, shall we? Here we go. Uh, Billy's book, uh, uh, Billy's Booger and Memoir is written by uh, William Joyce and his younger self. Oh, so you uh, read the book. Nope. I'll take the jacket off. Christy's whispering me, take the jacket off. Pardon? Take the jacket off. And I'm like, I'm wearing a sweater. <laughs> she just does this. Sometimes she loves me, but sometimes this is how she shows love. She's like, like that. That just means, mm, I married him. <laughs> this is called Billy's Booger, a memoir. Oh, lots of great, lots of great art in this. I'm a big art, art fella. Joanne Gordon is here. Okay, so I don't know how I'm supposed to read this. <clears throat> it's just a whole bunch of stuff. So I'll just read a whole bunch of things on the page. It goes, uh, oh, it's just showing It's just showing how uh, his mind is working. Nose message. Messages. Ask your father or mother to let you smell something while your eyes are closed. Tell whether your nose gives a pleasant or unpleasant image. And then he wrote a booger. Take me to your leader. Earth person. Take me to your leader. Earth person. <laughs> Top secret. Possible titles for this book. Nose dudes from beyond. It came from my nose. Billy's booger. And he, he checked off Billy's booger. So that's the book we're going to read, Billy's Booger. Meanwhile, back at his private island lab, Johnny and his uncle Sprint Bangley puzzle over the meteor that hurls towards the earth. Gee whiz, Uncle Sprint, that looks pretty bad. It sure does, Johnny. Oh, it's another book that he's written as a child. Gee whiz. Mmm, cheese whiz. No, cheese whiz. And here we go, reading the main part of the book that I thought I was already reading. Once upon a time, when TV was in black and white, and there were only three channels, and the wit kids, 
didn't have play dates. They just roamed free in the out of doors. There lived a kid named Billy. Oh, this sounds like it might be my life. Three chan. Oh, that page didn't want to be seen. That's Billy. Black and white TV with three channels. Billy loved monster movies and cartoons and comic books and something called funny papers. During the week, the funnies were small and in black and white. But on the Sundays, they were huge and in color. And you spread them out, they would fill a room. So the funnies, same when I was a kid, the funny papers were cartoons that they had every weekend in the newspaper. And I would do the same thing. We used to have... Back home in Saskatoon, the, the Star Phoenix, they would send you about this many if, in a little booklet. And you put them up and you spread them all out and you read them and it was pretty cool. And then you took your uh, Silly Putty, right? And you put it on like that and you could, and you could take, you'd have Superman and you go like that and you're, and it says, and sometimes a whole day, you would spend the whole day Reading the funny papers. Billy wished school was more like the funny papers, but his efforts at, at efforts at making math more fun were not entirely successful. <laughs> Billy, this is what I would do as well. I would make some doodles on my papers and things like that. And then got an F. Uh-oh. Billy also found regular sports too regular. He, he liked much better the sports that he invented, but the PE teacher didn't entirely agree. <laughs> I don't know what he's playing. But for sure, I want to be on his team. <laughs> I used to play a game um, in school called uh, I'm Staying at Home and Going to Sleep. Every now and then, Billy would get sent home from school with a note. Oh, the note. I got a lot of notes when I was a kid. But his parents always wrote back, um, you should see the stuff he does at home. And here's the note that says, Dear Mr. and Mrs. Billy. <laughs> Because that's their name, right? Mr. and Mrs. Billy, your son has been very odd as of late. And while we always try to encourage creativity, we cannot condone full-fledging something and mayhem. Uh-oh. Mayhem. One teacher's mayhem is one student's silliness. <laughs> just like the fact that he's just being him. I am a space dude eating some food. Nom nom. Then one day, Miss Pagely, the librarian, announced there would be a contest to see which could, could make the best kid book. Billy's brain was about to explode. He asked the librarian for books on many different subjects. Meteors and, and mythology, science travel, and mucus. Oh, what have I done? Miss Pagely worried. And the books will be judged in the following categories. Neatness, spelling, vocabulary, punctuation, grammar, and imagination. All out of each ten possible points. I loved books as well when I was a kid. I loved, would go in and I would take all kinds of books out. And uh, read and read and read. And I liked trivia books and silly books. And I, you know what I really liked? I liked a book, a series called The Three Investigators, Alfred Hitchcock and The Three Investigators, and um, Encyclopedia Brown, Encyclopedia Brown's uh, Two Minute Mysteries. They were some of my favorites. But all kinds of odd stuff I liked. But now, back to Billy. For the next few days, Billy thought and read and wrote and drew. Well, his nose is certainly to the grindstone, Billy's dad said. I wonder what... It kind of note we'll get this time, said his sister. But Billy didn't hear them. He was living the dream. 
nose to the grindstone uh, means that you're working hard. Yeah, put your nose to the grindstone. It's, I think it comes back from that saying is when people used to sharpen the knives, they'd be like right in there, getting right in there, making sure it was sharp and, and true. That might not be true, but I think that's what it is. The name of his book <laughs> is Billy's Booger, The Memoir of a Little Green Nose Buddy. <laughs> Billy's Booger. Oh, man. Oh, the, it's a book within a book. There we go. Chapter 1. I am sneezed. It was just a regular booger inside the regular nose of a regular kid named Billy. All the other boogers were there. Nick and Ed on the left, me and Curly on the right. And we were watching Billy do his math. Billy went exploring, so we had to hide. <laughs> I just understood what that meant. <clears throat> Billy went exploring, so we had to hide. He's been biting his nails again, said Curly. Must be the math test coming up, said Ed. Too bad you can't help him, I said. <laughs> Billy went exploring. Look, look at the finger inside the nose, you guys. That's hilarious. <laughs> Billy went exploring. These guys, the boogers are like way in the back there. They're like, oh no, don't take us, no. The finger is coming. He must uh, need to trim his nails a little bit. Right then, way, way, way in outer space, a star sneezed. And out came this meteorite that zoomed all the way back to Earth and through Billy's window. This, I'll show you this picture first before I try to read the rest of it. <laughs> you see what it says here? Sniffle, sniffle, little star, outer space, look out below, and there. Earth, our planet, Billy's house. Earth, our planet, Billy's house. The meteorite bonked Billy right on the top of his head. Oh, we were all knocked out cold. And Billy sneezed, and out I came. <laughs> Bonk at you. Chapter 2 Super Booger. When we woke up, I had an incredible math powers, and I was green, really, really green, and I decided that I would use my powers to help poor Billy out. I'll read to show you that, and then there's some other stuff to read. This is a harder book for me to read. So, bonked him on the head, he got a knot on the head, and then the booger is saying... Though only a booger, I can help you become the world's greatest mathematical genius. Genius, genius, genius. Gee, thanks. You're my pal and a super booger. Well, the name Super Booger stuck, and I was faster than a speeding spitball, more powerful than the meanest bully, and able to leap tall swing sets with a single sneeze. <laughs> <coughs> Able to <laughs> look at this one here. <laughs> at you. <laughs> I like this book. Thank you, Dougie Spears. Then Billy started getting superpowers that were amazingly and totally different from mine. <clears throat> he could turn green peas into chocolate, and he could fly, which of course meant we he had to wear a cape. And he could be invisible and generally super interesting all at the same time. This was harder. I wasn't sure how to read this. I went right across both pages. And down here, it's, she's, she's going, Ugh, peace. And he's like, don't worry. I'll use my chocolate ray vision. Chocolate ray vision. <laughs> Where are you, Billy? Right here. Reciting the encyclopedia backwards, 
As I yeah, genius of grasshoppers. <laughs> Where are you, Billy? I'm right here, just reciting the uh, L, yeah, the uh, encyclopedia backwards. Eh? That's what I'm doing. Just hanging out. Good drawing for Billy in here too. And with my help, Billy could do the hardest math any teacher could ever taught ever. The president asked Billy to math advise. Billy. Can you help me? I got to know how many candy bars we need to give all the kids in the United States of America. Well, my calculations show that uh, four bazillion candy bars should do it. That's about a thousand uh, bars uh, a year per kid. Thanks, Billy. Sure, Prez. Whispers. Four bazillion. Blah, blah. Oh, so it's happening as the booger's whispering in his ear here. <laughs> there is the president. I need uh, all kinds of... Chocolate bars for all the kids. Chapter 3. And so, Billy became the go-to kid on the whole darn planet when it came to math and stuff. And bad guys and supervillains and crime. Nick and Ed and Curly just stayed no side. Uh, they got ripped on their superpowers. But whenever the need arrived, i blast out Billy's nose and we would save the day. Out, out and away, is what the, the boogers say. saying. Our motto, the end. Don't bet on it. And the boogers are like, we're okay with that. We'll just stay in the nose. Out, out and away. Published in USA by Billy, Carberry, blah, blah, blah. Done entirely in green pens and one white pencil. So that's the book that he made for the librarian. Principal Blisterbomb would be the judge for the contest. Blisterbomb. Billy liked the principal. He got sent to him all the time. Especially during the science fair. He called Billy one of my most challenging students ever. So the day the winners were announced, Billy was pretty excited. But... He didn't win first place. Oh. He didn't win second place. He didn't win third place. He didn't get an honorable mention. He didn't get a note from his teacher. He didn't even get sent to the principal. Oh, he looks pretty bummed about that. It was a long walk home. His mom and dad were concerned about him. His, even his sister was worried. Billy's so normal now. It's weird. Ah, a week or so later, Billy glumly took all the library books back, even the ones about mucus. Miss Pagely smiled at him in a nutty sort of way. Then Billy heard laughing. Some of his friends and some of the older kids were at a table reading. This is hilarious! I want to check it out next. This book should have won something. In all the contest books in the library, Miss Pagely said, yours is checked out the most, Billy. He hadn't won first, or second, or third, or honorable mention, but his book was now in the library and checked out the most. This made Billy smile in a Billy sort of way. <laughs> Smiles with his eyebrows.
You got a 20 in imagination, said one of Billy's pals. But Billy didn't hear him. His mind was on fire. He wasn't so normal. It was weird anymore. And it was still Mr. Blisterbomb's most challenging student. Yes, he was. And here's the, here's the, I'll, I'll show you this page and then I'll read it to you. This is his evaluation sheet. What did he get for score? Neatness. Possible points out of 10, got three. Spelling, three. Terrible, though imaginative. Vocabulary, 10 out of 10, he got four. Extremely inventive. Punctuation, out of 10, he got a three. Pull back on the explanation points. I got that a few times. Grammar, out of a possible... 10, he got 6. Bizarre is what it says there. Imagination, out of 10, possible points, 20. No problem there, as usual. And then the, in the red it says, work on those low scores, Billy. I look forward to what you come up with next year. Mr. Blisterbomb, P.S. You're still my most challenging student. <laughs> and the walk home? <laughs> well, it was... Just the beginning of a long, long adventure. Oh, his imagination is awesome. You know, this book was, it reminds me so much of myself. Because, you know what, it was, um, I was a challenging student in school and I was always making doodles and I was always coming up with creative writing and things like that. And there were some teachers that, that didn't like me to be creative. And then there was Mr. Hahn and Mr. Mantika. They were two of my teachers that encouraged me to be as silly within limits. And uh, they really um, let me be who I was. Mr. Hahn was my uh, drama teacher. And then uh, Mr. Hate, which uh, was the wrong name for a fella. Because just the wrong name. He wasn't Hate. He was all, everybody loved him. And he and some other teachers came up with that idea because they knew I wanted to be a comedian. And so they said, as long as I attended all my classes and tried my hardest, that every Monday uh, and every Friday, Monday in the morning and Friday uh, in homeroom after, uh, right before uh, the bell went for the weekend, they would give me five minutes to be silly and talk about whatever I wanted to as long as it was appropriate. So they helped me be a comedian because they knew back then I wanted to be a comedian. So I have been very greedy with your time. We're going like almost 40 minutes here. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. Today I would like you to draw a picture of whatever your favorite thing is. And you can send it through me through, um, through Facebook if you want. How's that? Or write a little something. Whatever you want to do. Be creative. Be, uh, be creative as you can be. Be silly as you can be. And remember, it's okay to get mad. It's okay to get sad. It's okay not to like the people around you because you're not always going to like everybody. But what are the three things we have to remember? That's right. ABK. Always be kind. And be you. You be safe and you be silly and you be brave and you be kind and you be you. Because in my world, in all that you say and all that you do, you never have to be perfect. You just have to be you. Make sure you tell the people around you that you love them. I'll talk to you soon.